Hello everyone. Generally, when a patient comes with syncope to the emergency room, the first thing to do is we take an ECG. So what are we looking for on the ECG of a patient with syncope? So here today I have come with a quick revision on ECG changes in syncope and conditions associated with it. So let's start. So, so first is talking about rate and rhythm, bradycardia and tachycardia, wherein bradycardia looking for AV blocks particularly and tachycardia if it is supraventricular or a ventricular tachycardia. Next coming to axis, there is axis deviation along with AV block and bundle branch blocks indicating trifascicular blocks. One must keep this in mind while evaluating a patient with syncope. Next coming to the segments, first is the PR interval, looking for prolongation or shortening. Prolongation it is seen in heart block. PR shortening is seen in conditions like WPW syndrome and LGL syndrome. How do we differentiate either of this? WPW syndrome is associated with delta wave. In LGL syndrome there is no delta wave as the conduction is very close or even through the AV node and, and not through an accessory pathway. Next is looking for QRS morphology. It is important to diagnose conditions associated with syncope such as Brugada, HOCA, WPW syndrome, ARVD, cardiac tamponade and bundle branch block. So let's see each of them. In Brugada syndrome based on the type of Brugada, patient may have coved ST segment elevation along with T wave inversion in type 1 and saddleback ST segment elevation and upright T waves in type 2. Next, coming to HOCM and aortic stenosis, both of this condition will have LVH changes. Along with it, in HOCM, patient will have deep, narrow, dagger-like Q waves in inferior and lateral leads. Next, WPW syndrome, patient will have broadened QRS complex along with PR shortening and delta waves as I told previously. In case of ARVD, that is arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia, patient will have QRS widening with epsilon wave, which is the most specific finding seen in more than 50% patients along with prolonged S wave upstroke. Next, coming to cardiac tamponade, in which patient will have decreased amplitude of QRS complex and may have electrical alternance. In case of bundle branch block, patient will have broadened QRS complex more than 120 milliseconds. Next, coming to the QT interval, we have to look for prolongation and shortening. It is considered prolonged when it is more than 450 milliseconds in men and more than 470 milliseconds in women. It leads to a risk of R on T, which is likely to initiate ventricular arrhythmia. It is considered shortened when it is less than 330 milliseconds with tall peak T wave, which is again a risk for ventricular fibrillation or ventricular tachycardia. Next, coming to ST segment. In ST segment changes, we'll look for changes of MI and pulmonary embolism, which is also a rare cause of syncope. In MI, we'll look for either elevation or depression. And pulmonary embolism, patient may have tachycardia with the RVBB morphology with RV strain, with three-wave inversion in V1 to V3, along with rare S1, Q3, T3. So these are the changes we'll look for a patient in case of syncope. So one must keep this in mind while working in emergency room. How do we remember this? We can remember this by the mnemonic Wobbler, wherein W stands for WPW, wherein we look for PR segment changes. O stands for obstructive AV pathway, wherein we look for changes in PR interval. B stands for bifascicular block, wherein we look for changes in QRS morphology. The next B stands for Brugada, wherein we look for changes in ST segment. L stands for LVH changes, wherein we must think of aortic stenosis and HOCM, where we look for changes in QRST segment. E stands for epsilon wave, which is seen in ARVD, wherein we look for changes in ST segment and QRS morphology. R stands for depolarization abnormality, that is our long and short QT interval, wherein we see for changes in QT segment. So this is how we remember. Hope this helps. Thank you.